In this problem, we're told a certain freely falling object released from rest requires 1.5 seconds to travel the last 30 meters before it hits the ground. A. Find the velocity of the object when it is 30 meters above the ground, and B. Find the total distance the object travels during this fall. So let's just draw what's going on. So imagine we have this ball, right? It's going to be dropped, right? So it's dropped here, let's say here, and then it's going to fall, and then 30 meters from the ground, right? Let's say this is where the 30 meter mark is, right? So this is 30 meters, right? This is 30 meters, and then it's going to take a total time, right, to follow this, this part is going to take 1.5 seconds, right? And then it's going to eventually hit the ground, okay? Then the ball is going to hit the ground, right? And so what we're trying to do here, right, so there's two parts. One, we're trying to find the velocity of the object when it's 30 meters above the ground. So we're trying to find the velocity right here. And then we're also trying to find uh, the total distance the object travels during the fall. So when they say the fall, right, they're talking about the whole thing. So we're trying to solve for this distance here in part B. So just keep that in mind. Uh, let's just go ahead and start with A, though. So A, the first thing you always want to do is write out the given. So let's write out all our variables. So we have uh, delta x or delta y. Since it's in the y direction, I'm just going to write delta y, but no, they're interchangeable. Delta y, we have v, v sub 0, a, and t. So let's determine whether or not we have these variables. So what you want to do is pick an interval in which you know the variables, right? So for this part, for a, we're trying to find the velocity when it is 30 meters above the ground. So we're trying to find the velocity right here. Right, so think about the distance it travels of an interval. We know it's going to travel 30 meters, right? Here. Okay, so we can say the delta y or the change in y is going to be minus 30 meters, okay, since it's traveling downwards. We also know the acceleration right off the bat is just going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared, right? This is just the force due to gravity or the acceleration due to gravity, sorry. What is the time going to be in this interval next, right? So the time, t, is just going to be 1.5 seconds, right? Because that's how long this interval takes, right? So we know all these variables, and what we're trying to do is solve for the initial velocity of this interval, right? So the initial velocity, right, because we just set this interval. So we're trying to find v right here, which is just the initial velocity of this interval, which is question, or, which is what we're solving for. So we put question mark. And then v, right, is we don't know. We don't know its speed right here, so we're just going to put question mark because we don't know. So keep in mind, we're trying to solve for v sub 0, and we're given all these. So we should pick an equation to use. So notice the ones with v we're not going to use. So this one, this one, and this one we don't use. But notice this one, we have delta x, which is just delta y in this problem. We have v, or we're solving for v sub 0, we have t, and we have a. So we can use this one. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we can just go ahead and start plugging things in. So the change in y is minus 30, which is equal to v sub 0, which we don't know, times t, which is 1.5, plus 1 half, right? And then you're going to multiply that by a, which is, right, so 1 half times a, which is minus 9.8 right so minus 9.8 times t which is 1.5 squared but yeah so now we can just go ahead and solve right so i'm going to multiply this out so do 0 0.5 times minus 9.8 right times 1.5 squared so when you do this you're going to get minus 30 equals this is just going to become 1.5 times v sub 0 and then this is minus 11.025 so solving for this, I'm going to add this to the other side, right? So it's just going to be, when you do this, this is minus 18.975 now is equal to 1.5 times V sub 0. Divide by 1.5. And when you do this, you're going to get that uh, v sub 0 is equal to minus 12.65. So you can round however you want. You can say minus, uh, minus 12.7, whatever your teacher wants you to round, just make sure you follow that. And then the units are meters per second, right? So minus 12.7 meters per second, the minus indicates that we're going downwards, right? Because we say down's negative, up's positive, and we know it's going downwards, right? It's traveling down. So minus 12.7 meters per second, that's going to be uh, V sub 0, right? So your answer to A. Uh, let's move on to B now. So B is the total distance the object travels during the fall. So for this one, right, we don't just want this 30 meters. There's going to be some distance here that it travels, which is what we want to solve for. So uh, I'm going to call this delta Y because we don't know, right? So if we want to find the total, we have to find what delta Y is first and then add it to 30 to get the total distance it travels, okay? so. Think about how we want to set up this problem. What do we know? So uh, we don't know the distance is going to travel during this interval, right? Because we want to solve 
uh, we want to solve for how far right it travels. So delta y is what we're solving for. Okay, and that's what I labeled right here. And so we want to know the variables during this. So let's think about it. Um, right? What do we know? So we guarantee no a. Right? A is minus nine point eight. That doesn't change from problem to problem. Okay. But what we do know, right, is we know that it's going to right at the beginning of the interval. What do we know? Its velocity is zero, right? Because we're dropping it from free fall, right? It's it's at rest, right? When you drop the ball, we're starting it from rest, meaning it's um, just going to be zero meters per second. The initial velocity, right, the speed at the top at the very release is zero meters per second. What's the velocity at the end of this interval, right? The end of this delta y. Well, isn't that what we just solved for in the first problem, right? Because it drops this distance, and then we just solve for the velocity right here after it travels the delta y, right? So what we can do is it's just going to be minus twelve point seven. Right, and I'm actually going to use the more exact value, minus 12.65 meters per second. Right, so this is going to be the velocity right here. So we have it starts from zero, travels some distance with an acceleration minus 9.8, and then it's going to uh, be here, and its velocity is minus 12.65. So now we've got three variables, so we can solve for delta y, right? So the ones with t, we don't know how long this is going to take, so we don't use these. But if you look, this one doesn't contain t, and it has all the variables we have, so we can use this one. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So v squared equals v sub 0 squared plus 2a times delta x or delta y in this case. So we know v, right, is minus 12.65 squared, which is equal to v sub 0, which is just 0. 0 squared is still 0, is equal to 2 times a, which is minus 9.8. Multiply that by uh, delta x or delta y, sorry. So just do minus 12.65 uh, squared, which is uh, 160. 0 0.0225 is equal to 2 times minus 9.8, that's minus 19.6 times delta y, divide by minus 19.6, right? So keep in mind it's going to be a negative number, right? You can already tell. So divide by minus 19.6. So you're going to get delta y is equal to minus 8.1644 and so on. I'm just going to round to minus 8.2. So minus uh, 8.2, right? This is meters. So why is it negative? It's negative because we're going downwards, right? We're traveling this much in the negative direction, meaning the total distance, right, is actually just 8.2, right? So now we know this distance is 8.2. So if we want to find the total, it's going to be the 8.2 meters plus the 32, right? That's going to be the total. So 8.2 plus 32 is 38.2, right? So it's going to be 38.2 meters. That's going to be the total distance it travels during this free fall for your answer to be. So this right here is your answer to B, 38.2 meters. Uh, but yeah, so this was your answer to A. Uh, this is your answer to B. And so yeah, hopefully you found this useful.